paradise on earth. Submerged by the rage of the Jhelum. Plunged into darkness. Drowned by grief and suffering. Their homes destroyed. Their livelihoods crushed. Cut off from their loved ones. The worst floods in 60 years was a bolt from the blue for Jammu and Kashmir. But the deluge has shattered residents, more than the border tensions and terrorism. As village after village, tenement after tenement was overtaken by the furious waves, Kashmir saw its dreams getting washed away. In less than 48 hours, their life sunk. All symbols of their days in the lap of heaven were swept off. A natural calamity that snatched all that they had worked for in years. A Herculean mission for the rescue teams. Thousands trapped. Lacks cut off from the mainland. And the armed forces had their task cut out. As you travel into the interior areas of uh, Srinagar and especially uh, the south side of Srinagar, you come to know about the damage and the only way to get into those areas is on a boat. Now I'll ask Imtiaz to just pan around and show you the kind of damage and uh, the water levels that still exist uh, in the Srinagar city. Now this is the Pantha Chok area of uh, Srinagar. Now this uh, water they are seeing, it has completely engulfed uh, uh, the Highway, which is of course uh, a pivotal, a crucial uh, arterial national highway that connects uh, Srinagar with South Kashmir, or should I say Srinagar with the rest of the country. This is the situation that the highway is in. Uh, there are houses, in fact, there are, there are shops that are completely flooded. And in fact, locals tell us that in the last uh, one or two days, the water levels have come down. Sadal village near Udhampur is one of the remotest regions in the valley. It is also the worst hit. With landslides that were triggered by the floods, flattening the whole village. Now it is completely cut off from the mainland. Our journey begins from Udhampur. As our team moves towards Sadal, the terrain gets more treacherous. After negotiating with broken roads and tricky directions, the journey comes to a screeching halt. From here it is impossible to take the road. Trekking up to the village is the only option. And so we begin the uphill task. This is Saddal village in remote area of uh, Udhampur district and uh, uh, this now has been completely reduced to a huge, massive uh, pile of rubble. On the 6th of, uh, of September, uh, in the night of 6th September, there was a landslide triggered due to incessant rains there. Uh, took down the entire village with a massive uh, mass of uh, uh, boulders and rubble and uh, 
53 houses in this village were completely swept away. There are just a couple of them which are intact and they are at top. Uh, 200 odd people, uh, in fact, they were evacuated by the Indian Army that reached here two days later after the civil administration alerted them. And right now, what we are seeing here uh, towards my left is uh, the army men, uh, they are trying to uh, extricate two bodies that they have uh, just uh, spotted and there's a huge boulder that uh, is uh, uh, here uh, blocking the uh, approach to those bodies and uh, that is being removed here. Seven bodies have already been recovered, uh, two more are, uh, have been spotted and they are also being retrieved and after that 30 odd bodies are still left under this massive pile of rubble that uh, uh, you know uh, it is going to be an ex uh, a painfully a slow work because uh, it is all being done manually as no heavy machinery can be brought here. There's no road link. Uh, several landslides on the way have uh, blocked uh, the, uh, the, the uh, road approach. Sadal, a small village with 53 houses, has been reduced to rubble. Years of memories and dreams have all been buried. Over 40 are already dead. The remaining residents now occupy spots on the highland as the army begins the difficult task of pulling out the bodies. So in this neighboring villages and in this area there are about 200 plus uh, villagers. Mm -hmm. So all the villagers have been taken uh, to a place called Siroli Top. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the place, uh, it's another a kilometer walk from here and uh, it's, it's an hour's walk rather from here. And uh, that is the place we've kept them, we've made a may makeshift camp for them. And uh, also we've carried out air landings there to uh, give them some supplies, rations, water, blankets and all uh, such like uh, things to comfort them. So that's the place we are making them comfortable. Uh, those are the villagers that come down, help us try and uh, locate uh, the rest. In fact, some people are still trapped, hoping that these brave soldiers would come to their aid. The army remains their only hope. But the tragedy has not crushed their spirit. They may be back to square one, but are willing to pull themselves up and start again. The waters from the swollen Jhelum have turned Srinagar into a giant lake. Bustling colonies and markets are now submerged. The water level is constantly rising and is two to three stories high in areas like Rajbagh. People have moved to hospitals and other high-rise buildings to escape the rising water levels. Many residents are seen wading through the large pool, trying to recollect all that is left, watching out for their loved ones. The deluge has already claimed over 200 lives. Some 350 villages have been submerged since torrential monsoon rains triggered flooding across the picturesque Himalayan region. These are the raging waters of the Chelam and they have wreaked havoc in the Mejur Nagar area where the locals claim that not only has the government not managed to reach, not only has the state authorities not managed to reach, but most of the time none of the national media is also coming here. The road completely caved in in front of the force of the raging waters. The auto rickshaw vehicles, buses which were parked on the side of the road, all of them fell into the waters when 48 hours ago this river completely broke its bounds. In fact, the entire Mejur Nagar area, if you take a look at it, two, three floor houses, up till their second floor, they are completely submerged. The people here feel that the government hasn't been forthcoming with relief efforts, which is why they are now dependent only on a few individuals who've managed to hire a few boats and are one by one trying to get people out of their houses. The bridge in Jammu over the Tavi River, once a crucial link for the town, now stands crumbled. The flooding and torrential showers took a toll on this bridge that is now split through the center. A look at the roads of the city and devastation is evident everywhere. Army, Air Force, the National Disaster Response Force and the Indian Navy 
have undoubtedly emerged as the heroes of the rescue operations. Battling the raging flood waters round the clock to save the lives of people in the flood ravaged Jammu and Kashmir. Not caring about their lives and families, putting duty before self, vowing to continue the work till the last person is saved. One of the heroic tales is that of Wing Commander Abhijit Bali. His family has faced the flood fury too. collapsed and I came to know that my parents are in danger. I got a chance call from my father that our house has collapsed and he's not going to make it. I am posted in Nagpur. So I flew down 2000 miles over here and I got in the helicopter. I saw my house, it was gone. I winched myself down. Luckily I saw my parents and about 15 other people in a building which was also in danger. So I swung into that building, broke, broke open a window and went inside. Then I released the cable, I got all 15, 15 to 20 people, got them in a boat and got them all to safety. Bali came to Srinagar to rescue his family. And after that, he walked and swam 20 kilometers back to the base. He not only rescued his family, but a few of his neighbors too. And now the brave soldier pushes ahead with his mission to rescue those stranded in different parts of the state. At the Udhampur Air Base, troops are gearing up for the rescue mission. The Cheetah helicopters are being used to transport relief material. Even as the Indian Air Force launched one of its massive operations across the Jammu Kashmir Valley, which is suffering from the worst flood in its life after India's independence, it is these pilots of uh, uh, this Mi-17 V-5 elite machine of uh, uh, the Indian Air Force who are going across uh, in a packed weather situation in the Nehru helipad area and different areas of the Srinagar city, taking their life on risk and finally rescuing hundreds and hundreds of people. Even as there are thousands of people who are stranded, these Air Force pilots and these machines are the last hope of each and every person who is stranded across the Kashmir Valley. The aerial route is the only option. Since in the upper reaches of the state, the roads have been destroyed by landslides. In fact, many highways have simply disappeared overnight from the region. Yeah, it is difficult. But uh, my experience in Siachen as well as in Uttarakhand is help me, helping me to judge the situation and act accordingly. People were stranded, we have winched them up, we took them on ladders, we dropped food packets and now we are evacuating mainly from people who are coming to a clear ground like Nehru Helipad and uh, uh, other golf courses where we can land and uh, it is on full swing. I hope people will be evacuated soon, all of them. But as the residents of Jammu and Kashmir face the wrath of the floods. There are others too who are stuck in the valley. This is a BSF relief camp. Close to the Srinagar airport. 
Look at this chaos and mayhem presently. This is in fact a shelter camp that has been arranged and organized by the BSF here in Srinagar. These people, most of them are of course migrant workers from the states of Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and they are of course trying to go back not having enough money to buy air tickets. Now what you are looking at here is there are thousands of people and there have been, in fact, there will be this queue that will be made and they will be chosen uh, to be taken to areas including Jammu, Pathan Court and several other areas including Delhi. There will be flights that have been arranged by the uh, border security force. But try and understand the situation. There are thousands of people with uh, their family members, women and children who have congregated and for them to be able to be the chosen one to reach to at least any uh, any city or state outside JNK is not going to be an easy situation even for the BSF personnel to manage there but of course senior officers and even the Jawans here are trying to make sure that the situation remains under control anxious workers laborers who had come to Srinagar some arrangement is being made word is being sent out that a camp has been made here medical treatment is being given but let's understand the situation is not easy Thousands of workers from other states are queuing up to get the daily relief material. Some have not eaten for days. Others are just looking for clean water to drink. These men and women came here from different parts of the country to seek a livelihood and now find themselves in the center of this colossal tragedy. हम लोग छः छः दिनों का खाना खाए हुए हमारे कमरा का पूरा सामान दो गया जो हमारे सर पे वही पड़ा है हमारे घर में मम्मी बीबी सबरा हमारा हॉस्पिटल में पड़ी है घर में भी पैसा नहीं हम क्या कर सकते नहीं हम अकेले तो हमारे साथ तीन भाई है और हमारे साथ गांव वाला कम से कम छः लड़के हैं उन लोग को हमने खुद बाहर निकाला इतना पानी से बाहर हम लोग को बहुत परेशानी है नहीं कोई नहीं हमको हम यहाँ चार दिन से यहाँ भी पड़े हैं कोई नहीं बोलता है तुम जाओ दिल्ली Lanes of Rajbagh, once lined with trees and known for its spectacular mansions, now completely inundated. Houses vacated in haste, belongings left aside, the residents fled to save their lives. A former IG, now with the rescue team, struggling to locate his relatives. I am looking for my mother-in-law and her family, who is the army officer's widow. And I am not able to recognize this area. I don't know how these army people are going around in this difficult terrain. Water everywhere. I, have, I was born here. I served here all my life. I can't recognize this area. Isn't it disconcerting? These are familiar landmarks, areas where you grew up, where you served, the former IG of Kashmir. You've seen disasters. Have you seen anything like no, this? I have not seen. I have seen nothing like this. Nothing like this. This place is in shambles. A local, he is well versed with the region, but today finds it hard to recognize the lanes. In fact, in the same area is the office of the Hurriyat Conference leader, Mirwais Umar Farooq. But in these difficult times, the men who claim to speak for the Kashmiris are nowhere to be found. Deadly floods ripping through the heart of a state. The residents struck by a colossal tragedy. There is hardly any patch or corner of Jammu and Kashmir that is not affected by killer flash floods. Heavy torrential rainfalls not only cause flash floods but triggers landslides at several places, thus blocking Jammu Srinagar National Highway, which is lifeline to people of Kashmir. Supply of goods, essential items, medicines and other things came to screeching halt, thus adding to woes of the people living there. During the last several days, there had been 18 landslides at several places. Each day is now a struggle to recollect the remains of a life gone by. and hope to begin a new one.
But while these lives have been devastated, their spirit is not tarnished. And coupled with the resolve of the armed forces, Kashmir is set to bounce back. And hopefully, this paradise on earth will be restored soon.